Good morning guys, welcome to this gear short. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Baker style tent. We all love Baker tents, but the problem is with Baker tents is that they weigh so much. But One Tigress have developed this little thing we're going to be looking at today, the backwards bungalow, to be a really lightweight Baker style tent. So thanks for tuning in guys. So as it says on the tin, it is a review of the One Tigress Backwards Bungalow. It is a Baker style tent. Now personally, I absolutely adore Baker style tents, but the problem is with those is that they are normally made out of wax cotton. So therefore they are really, really heavy. You're not gonna be taking them on a hiking trip. But this Backwards Bungalow, this is made out of nylon. So this is pretty lightweight. So the One Tigress Backwards Bungalow weighs 1.4 kilos and it packs up pretty small and it could pack up even smaller than this if you use some straps. It's made out of 75D nylon which gives it a hydrostatic head of 1500 millimeters. Comes in two colors, the OD green and the Coyote. It comes with six guy lines and 10 pegs but you will need more pegs if you want to set it up properly but we'll take a look at that in just a second. Right, let's get it out of the bag and get it all set up. So taking it out of the bag, you literally have just got the tent the guy lines and the pegs inside there as well. So there's no poles with this at all, which I think it makes this really, really versatile because you can set it up with hiking poles, with some sticks from the forest, or as we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to string it between two trees. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna peg down the four corners. Now I'm gonna suspend this using a ridge line. So I've roughly got it in between two trees, which I'm gonna use a continuous ridge line to run up between the trees. All right, so that is the four corners all pegged out. Here we have the top of the apex here. You can see a piece of uh, webbing here with an eye on it. So you can actually use your hiking pole. You can invert your hiking pole and use that as your, your prop. But we're gonna use a continuous ridge line today. So we'll get the continuous ridge line around the trees and we'll get the apex suspended. So the first thing we need to do is just run our continuous ridge line through our webbing strap. So we're just gonna pass that through. If you're using a ridge line, don't forget to pass the ridge line through the loops on the top here. You've got two loops that will help keep the top of the tent up, especially if it's windy. And then on the other end, we've got a large prussic loop here, which actually doubles up as a soft shackle as well. So I'm literally just gonna feed this right up to the end of this line. And then we're gonna run this around the tree. Get that at the height we need it. Bring this back and just, and then all we've gotta do is just tighten up the prussic loop Right, so we just unzip one side of the tent. Right, so once the tent is unzipped, you need to peg out the side flaps. So we're just gonna peg that into the floor. You've got an adjusting loop here that you can pull that taut with as well. So the side flaps is what the actual waterproof top actually zips down to. So it does give you a little bit of space underneath there. It's not um, zipping straight onto the, uh, onto the main part of the tent. Coming around to the back of the tent, you need another three pegs, and this is to peg out the flap for the ventilation on the bottom here. So we'll just get that all pegged out. So that's the backwards bungalow pretty much set up. We've got the fly sheet here that obviously, once it zips up, that's your tent watertight. Now the one thing to remember with this tent is it is single skin. It does have a vent on the back there, but it's at the bottom. Now we all know hot air rises, so it's gonna condensate inside, especially if you're using this in the winter. That's why if you're using it in the winter, if you can get away and weather permits, you wanna suspend your fly sheet up and uh, that will allow some of the condensation out. Now on the back of the tent, you've got two loops here. So this is where one of your guy lines comes in handy. So you can just feed one of your guy lines through the, through the loop and then we're going to use one of the pegs. And what this is going to do, this is going to draw the top out so it gives you a bit more headroom. So the one thing I say about guy lines is they need to be pulled taut pretty much direct with where it actually attaches onto the tent or onto the hammock. So we're going to get that dead straight, put that in, and just gently just draw that taut. All 
All right, so opening up the mosquito net. And that's a really, really fine mesh as well. So it's gonna stop everything from mozzies, gnats, no seams. So that can roll up the top here. On the inside at the top here, you've got a green toggle, you've got an elastic, and then you've got on the inside of the mozzie net, you've got another piece of elastic. So you can then just run that toggle to the elastic there. And that toggle can be used if you want to fold up the fly sheet. The space wise in the tent, tons of it, absolutely tons. Once you pull these back bits out, you've got loads of space inside of it. I'm 187 tall and my head's not touching the top of it. I can sit up in this nicely. There's enough space for me, the dog and loads of gear. You could even fit two people in it as well. So there's two major concerns I've got with this tent. The first one is the floor. The floor is not durable at all. I definitely recommend using a footprint on this, something like a Tyvek sheet cut to the same specifications as the floor would be perfect because that's lightweight. The second problem you've got is there's no ventilation on the top of this tent at all. And if you're using this in the winter, then it's gonna really, really condensate up. Yes, there is the ventilation along the bottom there, but as we all know, hot air rises. And uh, if you're in really, really extreme conditions where you haven't battened down the hatches, then that condensation has got nowhere to go. So let's take a look at one of the main reasons I brought this tent is that is that you can pin this out as well. So for this, we need two guy lines, um, hiking sticks or a couple of sticks from the forest and a couple of pegs. So all I've done here is I've just made a really large bow line on there. And that is so I can just slot up this stick that we found and I'm gonna bring this down so it's just, just higher than the ridge there. And that is so that if it does rain, water's gonna run that way. And then we're just gonna peg this out at a diagonal. And this is where you need your other pegs because we've only got one left. So we'll just hook that into there. And then we're just gonna, same as the other one, just at a slight angle, we'll just uh, pull this out and then peg this into the ground. And then we can just adjust it just to get it nice and taut. So a few more specs on the backwards bungalow. It is 115 centimeters tall, 125 centimeters wide, and the length of this is 225. So there's plenty of space inside for one and all the gear, or possibly two people as well. So there we are, that's the one Tigris backwards bungalow all set up. And that is the reason that I brought this tent, is so that you can suspend the fly. So if the weather's absolutely pants, you've got somewhere where you can cook outside of your tent. And then if the weather does start to hoss it down, you can just drop the fly and zip yourself inside and keep yourself away from all of the elements. So the backwards bungalow retails at about 83 pounds in the UK, which I think is a really, really good price for the versatility of this tent. So thank you for watching. I'll stick a link to the product in the description below there. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. And as always, a couple of videos there for you to take a look at. And we'll see you next time on the next Gear Short.